What's going on, guys? Kevin from Epic Gardening here. Um, I've had a lot of good success, and it seems like a lot of people have really liked the explainer videos that I've done in this format. So I'm going to do another one on nutrient film technique, which I haven't done yet. It's one of the, I wouldn't say more obscure ways of growing hydroponically, but most beginners don't start out with this just because it's a little more complex to build. And in, at least in my opinion, some of the advantages you can actually find in a lot of different systems. But that being said, it's still a fun one and there still are some distinct advantages to it. Uh, most notably, the expandability of the system. So uh, in, in my opinion, nutrient film technique is one of the more expandable systems, meaning you know it's pretty modular. If you wanted to add more uh, channels to it, you could, and you could expand your grow significantly. So let's get into it. Let's see how we build one of these guys. So the first thing you're gonna need, as with many systems, is going to be a reservoir. So I'm just going to go ahead and have a sample reservoir here. Uh, I, I've got posts on my blog about how you can pick the right plastic to use because it actually does matter. And then the types of reservoirs that you can use. You can use like a big, big old uh, tub from Home Depot. You can use a uh, five gallon bucket. It, it kind of depends on the size of your grow and what you're trying to accomplish. But for now, let's just assume a basic reservoir. So the next thing you're going to need is something to oxygenate the water on a consistent basis. And in almost every case, that's going to be air pump, airline tubing, and an air stone. So let's get that up here. I like to use uh, simple, cheap Petco ones. I don't grow on a huge scale, so I don't need anything more commercial. Uh, and I find that works really well. For a system like this, nutrient film technique, with a reservoir this big, I would probably use one or two of these longer air stones, or I might use circular air stones with suction cups and place one right about here and one right about there, just to make sure that I'm oxygenating the water as much as possible. All right, the next thing we'll need, we're gonna need water pump and tubing. So for this type of system, unlike a deep water culture where all you really have is the air stone and then the roots just grow straight down, we're going to actually need a water pump to pump up into the channel, which you're not seeing yet, but you will see in a second. So uh, let's add the water pump. Again, you don't need a crazy powerful water pump. Something from the aquarium store, Petco, something like that will work just fine. Uh, all right, next thing you're going to need is a timer. Um, nutrient film technique, typically, I don't think this is always the case, but a lot of people will run a timer and do timed feedings. Uh, instead of just sort of running it on a consistent basis. Honestly, I think in a, you know, from an optimal standpoint, that one of those is definitely better. I'm not sure which off the top of my head, but you could do either, um, it, provided you're not drowning the plants and they're actually getting enough oxygen, enough air, enough uh, nutrients and enough water, should be just fine, right? Um, okay, so the next thing you're gonna need is the channel. And the channel is what makes the system so expandable, in my opinion. You can always add more of these, provided you have all, all the setup correct, all the tubing correct, and, and you make sure that the system is robust enough to be able to handle the extra channel. So I'll add that in here. So as you can see, what's going on here is the water's coming up, and it's getting pumped directly into this channel, which is sloped. So recommended slope is like usually 1 to 30 or 1 to 40. Um, you can do really, really slight slopes, but then you're, you're risking uh, a potential stall. So water actually not making it back down into the system, which is gonna be a pretty big no-no for a nutrient film technique. So this is the real risk of, of NFT, which I'll call from here on out, is, is not getting this stuff correct, not getting the flow rate correct and not getting the slope correct. Um, and this, you know, again, this is just an overview, so I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that, but that is one concern when you're gonna grow with an NFT system. All right, pretty simple here. The last thing we need is our net plots, our, our net pots and our plants, right? So typical setup, plant spacing is going to be dependent on the type of plant that you're growing. And typically in these channels, you kind of have to pre-plan that unless you are buying sort of a modular channel because you're gonna to need to drill the holes that the net pots are going to sit in. And a typical DIY setup actually doesn't look quite like this. It's usually a large PVC pipe that people are drilling into and then seeding the net pots. That's what I've typically seen. And that's what makes it a really cheap and easy and again, modular setup. Because if you wanted to add um, 
you, if you wanted the ability to grow more plants, what you would do is either add more channels horizontally, which would be on like the Z axis on this video, so I can't really show you, or, or vertically, right? And a lot of times you'll see this sort of zigzagging vertical setup that makes it look not only really cool, but also takes advantage of that slope and that gravity effect to bring the water down and basically let gravity feed the plants uh, after the water is pumped up to the very top channel. So guys, that is nutrient film technique. It's pretty dang simple. Again, it's not usually one that beginners start out with just because deep water culture is so much simpler to set up on both a conceptual level and just a parts level. You don't need the tray whatsoever. But if you're looking for variety or if you're looking to test something new and try something new out and maybe just grow in a system that looks a little bit cooler, uh, give this a try. I'd love to see any videos that you guys have. And again, if you want a more detailed post about this, you can always check the blog out. If I don't have the full tutorial up now, I'll have it up soon. I'll have the parts list and some examples of systems that you can build. So enjoy and keep growing. This has been Kevin from Epic Gardening. I'll talk to you guys later.